church gets like the world, it's time for revival. That's what he said. So what, guess what time it is? Go ahead and say it. It's time for revival. Amen. And it began to spread, and it just looked, this map was just full. I believe when God begins to move again on the churches, it's going to be in so many spots, you won't know where to go. You'll just say, Woo, blow in here, Lord. Put a fire down in our soul we can't contain, we can't control. People be seeing us coming down the street. Not only do they call us Sparky, now they be calling us Smoky. They say they're smoking fire with those people. And we be going, yes, hot dog, I got it, glory to God, I feel good, I feel great, I feel terrific. You see, Dr. John G. Lake, and some of you who don't know him, Dr. John G. Lake was a mighty man of God. He got his doctor's name because in Spokane, Washington, he had more healings people getting healed, divine miracle healings than the doctors put together in the whole city. So finally, the natural doctors came to the spiritual man of God and gave him a doctor's certificate and said, you're a doctor, John G. Lake. He was not a very educated man, and he also had degrees of education and was a wealthy man, but God called him into ministry. And he began to lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead. The dead was risen in his ministry. People were healed. Uh, the black plague in Africa that had spread across to people, they told him to get out of town. He said, I'm not getting out of town. He said, you put that bug on me and I'll show you it'll die get your microscope and they said we can't do that we're infecting you he said you can't infect me I'm a man of God just put that bug on me and watch it die and so they were curious they thought this man's crazy if he wants it that bad we're gonna try it and they put it on him and they watched that thing die the minute it hit him this is a man that when he was having communion with 60 lepers having leprosy and while they're in the middle of communion, they begin to get their noses back. They begin to get their ears back. They begin to get their fingers back and their toes back. Legs and arms begin to grow right in the middle of communion. Dr. John G. Lake said, I just lay in the floor and cry out to God. He said, we need to take an ax to the root of what's going on in our country that is stopping this move of God. We should stay in the book of Acts. The book of Acts should have never left. And he was sitting in a, in a park. He was resting and he was praying as he liked to do many times. And an angel came to him and he saw a vision. And that angel told him, said, as he spoke, he said, I can see there is coming from heaven a new manifestation of the Holy Spirit in power. And that new manifestation will be in sweetness, in love, in tenderness beyond anything your heart or mind ever saw. The very lightning of God will flash through men's soul. Now get that. The very lightning. No wonder you say, why do these Pentecostal people have to jerk, shake? Why are they doing They got lightning. You ever just stood there when you get zapped with lightning? Zzz. Wow, ouch. Something going to move in you. <laughs> Something going to happen in you. And he said he sees the very lightning of God going through people, through men's soul. And he had a vision of an angel. And an angel opened the Bible to the book of Acts, drawing his attention to that book and telling him, he said, this is Holy Spirit. This is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost and he took him through the whole entire book of Acts itself showing him how church should be hang with me we're going to get to something here in a minute we'll end up at 1 Samuel 7 and you'll see angel spoke and told him then this is Pentecost as God gave it through the heart of Jesus strive for this contend for this. Woo. Teach the people to pray for this. How many pastors we have in the house? One, two, three, four, five. Teach the people to pray for this. Said, My house shall be called a house of singing, shouting, flags, 
dancing, preaching, teaching. No. What? A house of prayer. So to teach them to pray for this is not out of line, is it? Teach them to pray for this. For this alone. For this and this alone will meet the necessity of the human heart and have the power to overcome, to overcome the forces of darkness. It's getting dark outside. It's going to get darker. He said darkness and gross darkness would cover the earth. But God said, I'll raise up a standard. What's going on? We're praying. What ambulance are you in? I jumped in number seven. I'm getting my heartbeat back. Ba -boom, ba -boom. I'm hearing that there's going to be a fire of revival like this world has never seen. I've been talking about the revivals, and people's been talking about the revivals, but I'm fixing to be in the middle of one because my heartbeat is back, because I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that eight day. And the angel departing said, pray, pray, pray. I think that's pretty plain. Teach the people to pray. Because prayer and prayer alone, much prayer, persistent prayer, is the door of entrance entrance into the heart of God is the door of entrance into the heart of God oh, I just want to know more about God just want to know what God wants me to do I just I just need you to pray tell me what my will what God wants me to do I just don't know what to do pray yeah but I mean I, I need to be told what to do I just told you pray and pray them more. This is the heart of God. Problem with most people is really what they're saying is I want your position. I want to do what you're doing. Most pastors would be happy to say then go. <laughs> they won't last long. They think they will. <laughs> Amen. This is the door of entrance into the heart of God. See the book of Acts was full of miracles healing salvations and deliverance and many souls were added to the kingdom of god three thousand on the day of pentecost three thousand they crossed all barriers and all denominations and came against religious spirits and idol worship idols don't seek people idols don't just jump in your house and seek you say i'm an idol you want me people seek idols yet it came against idols religious spirits where do we need to be in the book of acts where's the church going to go from here what's the church supposed to do get back to the book of acts ruth heflin said the book of acts was the first fruits first fruits first fruits can you imagine if that's the first fruit what our harvest of revival is going to be because I've, I've studied the Welch, I've studied the Hebrides, I've studied the, uh, um, now I can't even think of them, and I've studied all of them. I've got them even listed in the years of the different revivals and the waves of revival. Even the one where the Welch revival, that, that it stopped for a minute, and everything was moving, and then everything just went. It just, like the Holy Spirit left, and the mother came home and laid down on the floor weeping and crying. See, she could have just gotten the ambulance and said, I'm dying, it's over, they don't want to be here. But no, she said, I don't want you to go, don't go, Jesus, don't go, Holy Spirit. And she was weeping and crying and interceding, and her son came in, and he got in the floor trying to comfort his mother, and instead he said, keep her praying, God, keep her praying, God. Four o'clock in the morning, people got up out of their bed, weeping and crying, walking toward the church. And that's how the Welch revival began. Yeah, Holy Spirit just woke them up and they started walking to church. <laughs> God needs to wake up some people, start walking to church. Some people come in and say, what you got all these chairs for? They've just been waiting on you. Really? Yep, we've been praying over them. Maybe it's been waiting on you. Glad you're here. That chair's yours now. Come on. Hallelujah. 
The spirit in us groans to once again see the searching life of God sees the souls of men and cast the devil out of them. Heal the sick in multitude and stir the land with the conviction that God has sent his son, died on Calvary, rose again, and sat at the right hand of the Father. Amen. We need to get back to the book of Acts. They called it back then the ABCs of revival in my dad's day. A.A. A. Allen, William Branham, Jack Coe. I think I have a book on A.A. A. Allen, God's Miracle Fire back there. ABCs of revival. Well, I'm ready to go to Z in the alphabet. <laughs> I'm ready to get to number Z or letter Z where it's the harvest of revival. If Marie Woodworth Edder says, in a hundred years from now, what's happening here in Chicago, Illinois, will be greater than what I'm in, and it's gonna spread across the world. If uh, William Seymour at Azusa Street said, the revival that I'm in over a hundred years from now, it's gonna be sweeping across the world. He didn't say across California. He said it will sweep across the world. Six hundred million people were touched in the revival of Azusa Street and it was taken out to different parts of the world and different parts of the cities and nations of the United States but he said this revival is nothing compared to the revival over a hundred years or around a hundred years or so from now that is coming that is coming I mean Smith Wigglesworth I mean William Seymour is in a barn, he's a one-eyed black man in a time of segregation who is just humble before God, doesn't even want to be seen of man. Many times he would, had a crate over his head and the children and the parents, everybody, children were speaking in tongues, interpreting, they were speaking Japanese, they were speaking Spanish, languages they didn't know, but in the move of the Holy Spirit, there would be people from other countries and these children would speak in tongues and speak direct to those people and not even know what they were doing. It's just a move of God. One of the children said that while they were in that revival of Azusa Street, there was a man who had his arm completely cut off. He said, William Seymour told him, come on up here. And he began to lay hands and pray. He said, God's going to give your arm back. And he said, I began to watch. And he said, as it did, it came down bone first. And then here came skin over it. And then came some more bone in front of that. And here came the skin and the muscles and tissue. Then the bone would stick out about that far again and you'd see the bone going down and here come the arm of skin and muscles and tissue until it came on down all the way into a hand and he kept saying and he gave him fingernails. He even got fingernails. <laughs> and he said, this revival I'm in, it's nothing compared to what's coming. I began to listen to the different things of the different revivals and I said, Lord... I know what happened in my dad's day when 283 ambulances in one night and only one went home because 282 was miraculously healed. When my dad was so on fire for God and there was 83 people on stretchers dying. They had six months or less to live and he'd put them behind the stage, behind the black curtain and he was just preaching away, something like that. God will set your fields on fire. Very powerful message that's back there. If you like good powerful messages and divine healing on trial, his DVD to see the old tent, the old hairdos and all that. And he's preaching away in the fire of God and the Holy Ghost hits him and he goes over to that black curtain and he grabs that black curtain and he begins to pull it across the stage and he walks up to those hospital stretcher beds and he grabs those people, throwing them, live or die in Jesus' name name live or die in Jesus name live or die people just hitting the floor IVs going everywhere thought oh my goodness brother Cole you're killing us Holy Spirit landed on that platform and those people got up and danced and run and jumped and screamed and hollered they were healed they were set free only one went back home in an ambulance 82 of them was miraculously healed in one night now i read the bible and my bible says jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he didn't change what he did two thousand years ago he still does today well sister joanna why aren't we seeing it because you're not hungry thirsty i mean you are but as the church as a whole i'm talking about not hungry 
There's two things God's response to in revival. It's the hunger of the people and the cries of the people. Man, and when he begins to hear your cry, when he begins to hear the hunger in your heart, and he said, just like when they came and followed him when he was going out and he fed the uh, 5,000 with the, well, it was really probably 25,000 with wives. It said 5,000 men. When he broke the fishes and the, uh, 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 and the loaves, five loaves and two fishes, and he fed that multitude, what happened? He, they were hungry. But first, they were hungry spiritually that when Jesus was leaving to get on the boat, they outran Jesus. There he goes. There goes the disciples. And they run to go with him. And when Jesus got off, when he ended up in the desert place, he goes, we got to feed these people. Not naturally first. Spiritually, he began to teach them because they were hungry. Then the disciples said, oh, day's been far spent. You need to send them home. See, that's the problem with the churches today. We're telling pastors, well, it's just, there was a long service. You didn't have to feed us the whole load of hay. We didn't need to eat it all in one service. Some of you do. Sometimes we won't see you again, so we've got to cram as much in as we can. Just give them the whole bale of hay right now. Just give them the whole bale. Yeah, but they can't eat that much. I don't care. They're going to need a month's supply because they ain't going to be back for a month. Oh, now I'm meddling. I better get back to preaching. Amen. But when people get hungry and thirsty, there's going to be a stirring of God. He's not going to say, send them home. He said, sit them down in the green grass. Put them in companies of 50s and 100s. They're going to eat. They're going to eat till they're so full. They're going to say, I can't even put a peppermint in my mouth. I don't want no more. And there will be leftovers. Twelve baskets left over. Why am I saying all this? I'm fixing to come to a point. Because I'm telling you, I've been crying out, and I said, God, why are we not having revival? I'm having revival. I've decided to have it with or without you, and I've been having a blast. It's fun. And I'm thinking, man, they're really missing it. And some of you are already having revival. You already got a fire down in your soul you can't contain, you can't control. That's why you say to Pentecostal people, you may be seated if you can, because they sometimes can't. They are jumping, running, hollering, leaping, laughing, shaking. And woo! They start singing, Lord, I'm hungry. Oh, 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 I'm having a meltdown. Because the Holy Spirit begins to move on you. Something begins to change from the inside out. And you just get more hungry. And you say, I want more. I want more. It's like that song, I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Boy, you're sitting there and you're thinking of the day of Pentecost and you go back to that day of Pentecost where there was a mighty rushing wind and a fire of cloven tongues like a tornado that hit that place. It was so powerful that 3,000 people were saved and in Acts 2 and 6 it said it noised abroad. I was in Rochester, Indiana. And I didn't know how far this fire was. But we were leaving a alignment, aligning with heaven meeting that I had spoke at. And you could see smoke. I mean, it was almost like fog. It had gotten so bad. And it was all around. I said, honey, there's a fire. I wonder where it is. And we're trying to look. And, of course, me, because I like fire, real, the real fire of God, not fire fire. But I'm like, let's go see where it's at. See, when there's a fire, people want to know what's going on. They want to go, they'll say, stay in your homes. They were telling people in Gatlinburg, now do not come to Gatlinburg. Do not come to Pigeon Forge. There's a bad fire. People got in their car to go drive to see it. They were having traffic control people going up. Not, they were already trying to get the people out of the city, and that traffic was jammed trying to get them out. They thought nobody's going to come up. Here come traffic up. To, they're like, no, turn around. Okay. We just, I'll turn around up there. In other words, they just wanted to see. When the church gets on fire, they're going to want to come see. I said, they're going to come. And they're going to see it from a distance. They're going to know there's something going on. And I, I found out later from the people there in Rochester where we were speaking the next morning, they said that thing was over an hour's drive away. I said, well, it sure looked like it was right here in your city. 
When there's a fire starts taking off, people will just think it's right next door to them. <laughs> They'll be saying, I'm telling you, that fire was so close, I could put my hand on it. Let me tell you, it's time the church be so on fire, people can put their hand on it again. They say, I'm going to church because Susie's sick. I'm going to church because Johnny needs God. I'm going to church because I need God. I'm not going because I'm trying to show God I'm there and make myself feel good. I'm here because I know he's here and he's going to change me from the inside out and the people I bring are going to catch on fire too. Woo! Amen. Revival is a renewed conviction of sin and re repentance. It's obedience to God. It is giving up one's will to God in deep humility not only removes sin from our lives, but God asked, asked to move into the center of all we do. That's what revival does. He becomes a sinner. What did he do when they set up camp every time in the wilderness? They put the ark in the center. From back then to now, he still says, I will be the center. But there's a problem. Amen. There's a problem because people have done like they did in 1 Samuel 7. 1 Samuel 7, 3 through 10. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts. See what happened at Mount Carmel. There were two hearts there. One one heart, just the heart after God. He had to bring everybody to Mount Carmel because people had two hearts. He said, choose you this day whom you will serve. God's beginning to draw the line again, and that's where the revival is going to come. You've got to make a choice which one you're going to serve. And he said, those who choose to serve me, they're going to see the fire. Those who choose to step over the line to be where I say and put away their gods, I'm not going to put up with two hearts. I'm a jealous God, and I will not have but one heart, and that's a heart after God. Two things that move God, the hunger of people, what makes people hungry is a heart after God and the cries of his people. What makes people cry out when they've had enough? Are they hungry? Are they desperate? Are they just excited? Sometimes there's just an utterance cry, but there is a cry that comes from us, and God begins to respond because he said, Pharaoh, let my people go. Why? Because they were crying out to God. I can tell you all kinds of stories in the Bible he responded to the cry. Amen? So if you do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only, and he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. You mean darkness is going to be pushed back? The enemy's going to push back? It's a high place. The enemy has a high place until you start praying. I said, the enemy has high places all around you until you start praying. Woo! Then who takes over? And you don't have to go up there. Some people, they think they're going to go up and fight the devil. Well, he's up there in the Capitol building. I'm just going to go up there and I'm going to pray that thing away. He's, he's, he's in the city. I'm going to go city hall. And I'm going to send, you know what? I can just begin to pray. I can go declare right in front of City Hall. I can go in front of these bars and these joints, but I'm not going to go in that place. There's a principality and power in charge, but I can begin to pray, and God will push that darkness back. I pray God burn that thing to the ground. Don't let it build back. There's a lot of places. There's three of them already burnt as I'm traveling. Three triple X rated places. My husband said, honey, wake up. Those places have burned. Everyone I pass on the freeway, I'm awake. I said, let it burn to the ground and not build back. My husband said, what are you burning to the ground? I said, those X-rated places. It's time God destroy the works of the devil. I just cry out and pray. I'm glad he put me on the road. I can pray for revival in every city and state. I can pray for things that the enemy has assignment. And I can begin to pray to push back darkness. And he may think he's got principality and power. But when people begin to pray, darkness begins to get pushed back. Woo! <laughs> and Samuel's telling them here. 
God, put these strange gods away and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel put away Balaam and Ashtaroth and served the Lord only. And then he said to him, Let's meet in Mizpahs. Get the people together, the people who are sincere. You see, what's going to happen is some churches are going to say, let's just meet and have a meeting. Some of you come tonight because the pastor said, let's just meet, have a meeting. Let's come to Mizpahs. Let's come to Jesus' Lord's house tonight. Let's just come and put away things that has been going on and begin to cry out to God. And the people even said to Samuel, Samuel, cease not to cry. Pastors, cease not to cry. People, intercessors that are in the house, cease not to cry. Yeah, but I'm in the ambulance. No heartbeat. I'm weary and well-doing. All I've heard about, there's going to be a revival, but nothing's happening. Just seems like it's just same old church. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of going. People's tired of going. When's it going to change? Cease not to cry. Get back on the post. Stand back up and be the church again. Pray. Contend for this. Teach the people to pray for this. Prayer and prayer alone is the heart of God to bring the book of Acts back to life and stay alive. And he was telling him, cease not to pray unto the Lord in verse 8. Cease not to pray. Some of you pastors need to come to you as intercessors and you to pastors. Don't stop praying. That's what they were telling Samuel. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. I know we messed up. I know we've got things in the way. Even Gideon, he heard the stories for 200 years. For 200 years, but now nothing was happening. And he's going, God, did you leave us? What happened? I heard how they crossed the Red Sea. I heard these things of that. I heard about the blind eyes being opened of Jack Cole. I've heard these things, but now for 200 years, nothing has been going on. Why did you leave us? Why did the Midianites keep coming down upon us like grasshoppers and taking everything we got? Where did you go, God? He said, I didn't leave you. Y'all left me. He said, I never leave you nor forsake you, but lo, I'm with you always. I didn't leave you. You left me. But now that you're crying out, get up. Get up and go burn the idols. Get up. It's time to go to work. When some of you get up and start asking God and start crying out, he said, good, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear from you. I've been waiting on you. Get up. Cease not to cry. Begin to pray. Pray like you've never prayed before. And Samuel Samuel took a lamb, a suckling lamb, and offered it on a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. The Philistines started coming in. The devil said, oh, no, we've got to go get them. We've got to stop these Christians. We've got to stop these, these people. The Pentecostal people are getting on fire again. They're jumping, running, leaping, laughing, crying, shouting. They're spinning like tops. They're rolling in the floor. Those holy rollers are back. I'm telling you, something's going. Let's get in there. Let's stop this. And it said they begin to gather close because they were going to stop what was going on. But the Lord thundered. But the Lord thundered. A great thunder. It's time the church gets their thunder back. God's going to thunder again. And it's going to be a great thunder like we've never known before. And the Bible said that when it did, it caused the people of the enemies to be confused and defeated. The Philistines got confused. It was so funny today as we were packing up our room to go to the service knowing we were coming here tonight. There was a storm outside. And my husband was trying to tell me something and it thundered so loud it shook the building. And he goes, <gasps> that scared me. He said, now I forgot. What was I telling you? I don't even know. And I said, that's what happened to the Philistines. They forgot. They didn't even know what they came.
came for. They didn't even know what they were doing. I said, honey, that's a sermon. It's going to thunder and the enemy's going to forget his plans. It's going to thunder and sickness is going to be healed again. Blind eyes are going to be open. The lame walk, the deaf hear. People are going to run to the altars. Drug addiction's going to be delivered just like that. People are going to be set free and get saved. Demons are going to come out. And they'd be saying, what happened at your church? Thunder. A great thunder. Whoo. Church, it's time we start crying out because God wants to thunder on us again. I said he wants to thunder on us again. He wants to send his thunder and confuse the enemy. It takes us. Got to put away those strange gods. Well, we ain't got no gods. We ain't got nothing more important than God. All I got's a phone, smartphone. It gets more hours of my time than God does. And all I got's a TV with gun smoke. Or I dream of Jeannie. I don't even know what's on these days. Tell you how long it's been for me. I think some people are watching something now like called... Uh, uh, night of the living dead or night or I don't know something about there's supposed to be zombies dead walking See y'all don't know either like me. I'm like, ooh, that just sounds horrible. I, I Live for resurrection life. I don't need dead things. There's enough dead things around me In fact, there's going to be such a revival that the dead bones and the dead bones of the churches are going to hit the bones of Elisha like they did in first king whenever they were running with that dead man and they begin to run and they were trying to get away and the Midianites were coming and they said, oh, the enemy's coming and they threw that dead body on those dead bones of Elisha and that man revived. He came back alive. He stood up and I believe we're going to run into the dead bones of revival. Bible that looks like it died but we're going to hit those bones we as a dead church and we're going to revive and revive means to live again to become become a new to be alive again church we're going to get up because God's going to thunder on the church again stand with me we need our thunder back I am crying out to God. When she began to sing, Lord, I'm hungry. I said, yes, Lord. I wrote this sermon down, but I didn't know I was going to preach it tonight because I wanted more time to study and prepare. But when she starts preaching, Lord, I'm hungry, he said, go get your notes on thunder and tell them. Tell them it's time to tell the stories because I'm going to thunder again. It's time to climb in the ambulances. He said, I've got angels on assignment. To resurrect the church again. I got angels inside just like in that dream. In the ambulances. Saying tell the stories. Some people say oh all you do is brag about your daddy. You bet I do. And I will continue because it's a fire I want again. It's a fire he carried and he didn't care. He walked in power and authority and boldness. And when he showed up it thundered in the tent. When he come into a city, it thundered in the city. And people were set free. And people for six weeks to three months, depending on how long the revival lasted, it wasn't one day, it wasn't three days. It would go for weeks and sometimes months. There would be such thunder. So much so that they would come and tell them they needed to put a noise ordinance on them. And my dad. Uh, so Joanna called me up. And she said, I'm coming through. Brother Schaefer, we've been gathering Monday nights for prayer, for revival. Community, community. And I said to the Lord, okay, Joanna's coming. What's the name of this gathering? And he told me this, revival fire. And I never told you. He said, it's revival fire. Jesus. Thunder on us. Thunder on us again. I don't know about you, but I want my thunder back. I don't know about you, but I want the church to have its thunder back. I'm tired of what I'm seeing church as usual. I'm tired of people just barely getting by. 
I'm tired of sick bodies getting worse instead of better when we have a resurrection Savior who's already paid the price. I'm tired of us living in these things. Let's zip my Bible up for me. Thank you. I am. And I believe that Lord wants to thunder on us again. But we're not very many, Lord. He said, get in. As soon as I get rid of all this junk and trash, as soon as I remove some of these people and get you down to this little bitty army, watch what I'm going to do. <laughs> Went to the temple, and he said, let me whip all this mess out. As soon as he whipped them all out of the temple, he said, now let's have church. And they brought the sick, and they were healed. It's time we have church again. It's time we be the church God called us to be. And I believe Holy Spirit is drawing our hearts. I believe some of us feel like the skeleton inside that ambulance. And said, Lord, how much longer? I told him, God, before you take me home, before my last day on this earth that I go there, because it is appointed unto man wants to die, I'm not going to be in denial trying to say I'm going to live forever. Some people who preach that stuff and try to, then they have, you have a funeral for them, and you're like, whoa. I'm not in that. But I just said, God, I want to see it. I want to see it in my lifetime again. I want to be a part. I don't have to speak. I just want to be sitting right in the middle of it. And I'm just going to take that fire and throw it on me, and then I'm going to just start throwing it on everybody around me. Woo! I'm ready for my God to thunder again. I said, I'm ready for him to thunder again. For a mighty move of God. Let's sing that. Lord, I'm hungry. For a mighty move of God. Tell him that. We're going to pray for you here in a minute. Why don't you just worship him a minute? Move of God. Lord, I'm hungry. A mighty move of God. Lord, I'm thirsty, pour out your Holy Ghost, Lord, I long to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me, cause I'm hungry, do you hear it, wait, cause I'm hungry, why do you, Cause I'm hungry for your move, dear Lord. Raise your hands and tell him, Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. Lord, I'm thirsty for out your Holy Ghost. Lord, I long to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me. Cause I'm hungry. Yes, I'm hungry for your move. Tell him again. For your move, I don't want any other move. I don't want a false fire. For your 